around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> tonight, Matt. Huh? Over at the bar there. Oh, yeah, I see him. <laughs> Doc, Marshal, step up. I'll buy you a drink. No, thanks, Cybert. Something wrong with my money? Cybert, the only thing wrong with your money is it belongs to you. Oh, now, Doc, that's no way to be when I'm celebrating my new contract. Oh, what contract? The cavalry. I deliver the first consignment of horses next week. And what's the cavalry going to do with those stringy, wild renegades of yours? Renegades? Now, you don't figure on breaking those horses, do you? You're not good enough to do it yourself, and no rider in this territory will work for you. I'll find somebody. I'll do it fast, Cybert, and then get out of town. All right, Marshal. Sure. Yeah. You know, Matt, it makes me ashamed of myself the way I feel about that man. But I, I just can't help it. Yeah, I feel the same way, Doc. Matt? Yeah, yeah, Kitty. Come on over here to the window. No? Yeah, I want you to see something. What is it? Look out there. See those two boys? Yeah, what about them? Did you ever see them before? No, I don't think so. Well, I've been watching them. They act real lost. Maybe we better go see. Yeah. Come on. Ah, hello, boys. Hello, mister. What are you doing out on Front Street this time of night? Is this Front Street? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, where are your folks? What do you want to know that for, mister? Uh, this is Matt Dillon. He's the U.S. Marshal here. We ain't done nothing. Well, where are your boys from? Texas. Texas? Now you're a long way from home. Yes, sir. What about your folks? We ain't got any. Ma and Pa got burned up when our ranch caught fire. Oh. Well, how'd you get here to Dodge? Followed the trail herd most of the way. Where are your horses? Oh, we had to sell them upriver. But the money's long gone. Our uncle is supposed to meet us here. You boys hungry? Yes, ma'am. But we don't want to beg no food. Well, you're not. You're my guest. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, say, Matt. Yeah. Why not have Chester take him down to the livery stable later? Ma Scrimmick can use the help, and they can earn their meals and get a place to stay. Yeah, that's a good idea. You boys know anything about horses? Yes, sir, a lot. Well, come on inside. We'll see about that food. You go on, boys. I'll uh, be with you in a minute, huh? You still here, Cybert? I'm leaving, Marshal. Last thing I want is trouble. Well, what is it, boys? Moss Grimmick says you can sleep up there in the loft. He'll tell you what to do in the morning. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Dillon says to come see him tomorrow, and he'll try to get in touch with your uncle. Well, thanks, Mr. Proudfoot. You might as well call me Chester. Everybody else does. Yeah. <sighs> 
We're sure lucky for this, ain't we, boss? Yeah. People here in Dodge City are mighty nice. Especially that Miss Kitty. She's pretty, ain't she? Yeah. I guess so. Hello, boys. Hello. I'm Oren Seibert. I'm Bus Cheney. This here's my brother, Howie. Howdy. I hear you boys know about horses. You ever break any? Sure, lots of them. Well, now, if you can ride, you don't need to hang around here cleaning out stalls. I got a real job for you out of my ranch. Make yourself some money. We could sure use some, all right. Then you're hired. Now get your horses and meet me out back. We ain't got any horses. No? Well, say, I'll tell you what I'll do. I got ten head need breaking for next week. You boys break them ten for me. After that, you can take your pick. You mean it? Both of us? That's what I said, didn't I? Come on out and get in the wagon. Get your stuff, Howie. Let's go. Yeah, it'll get hot. Well, how are your new helpers working out? What helpers? Uh, the Cheney brothers, those two boys that Chester brought down here last night. <laughs> I ain't seen hiding or hair of them. Well, what happened to them? I guess they just pulled out and left in the middle of the night. Well, that doesn't seem right. They talk like good, straight boys, boss. Anything turn up missing? No. I got that telegraph sent off, Mr. Jones. Oh, thanks, Chester. But the way things look, we won't need it. The boys pulled out during the night. They did? Well, that's funny. When I left them here, there was a dog tired. They was near asleep on their feet. They seemed mighty grateful for everything, too. You can never tell about footloose youngsters like that, Chester. Well, they're gone. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's get back to the office, Chester. We'll see you, Moss. Sure. Long, Marshal. Bye, Moss. My genius kitty's sure going to be disappointed. She took a real liking to them boys. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Take him around again. Oh, that was awful good riding, Buck. Uh, oh. Did your leg hurt you much? Uh, pretty much. But I, I guess I'm getting used to it after five days of this. Anyway, that's number seven. Only three more to go. We'll make it. But that big stallion's going to be tough. Hey, you. Uh, but... Yes. Yes, Miss Stabbett. Go on up to the house. I want you to take the wagon into town. Me too? No. You stay. I don't you do any riding while I'm going, Howie. Oh, boss, I can Now, manage. you leave them Bronx alone, you hear? You just do chores till I get back. Oh. I'll get busy now. I won't be going long. You just put some feed down. All right, boss. What are you fixing to do there, boy? Oh. Put down some feed, Mr. Seibert. Now, I didn't hire you to do chores. I hired you to break horses. Boss told me not to ride while he was gone. He won't be back till supper time. You gonna waste the whole afternoon? Well, no, sir, but... Then what are you waiting for? Well, I, I wouldn't mind riding, but Boss told me... He don't trust you. I've watched you ride. You're near as good as he is. You can handle any of them. I don't know, Mr. Sybert. You lost your nerve? No, sir. I'm not afraid. Well, you're sure acting like you're afraid. 
One thing I can't stand is a coward. I ain't no coward. Then let's get a saddle on one of them horses. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Uh-huh. Do you think we can afford a vacation this year? Well, I don't know. Let's see. The car could stand some work. Then there's that chair we've been meaning to buy, and I guess we could always cash in this... Kitty, if things stay this quiet, maybe you'd like to have a supper with me tonight, huh? Oh, well, thank you, Matt. I was afraid I'd have to sit and watch Sam Noonan polish the bar all night. <laughs> hey, Matt, look. What? Isn't that bus Cheney? I sure is. Hey, bus. Oh, oh that. Hello, Marcy Dillon, Miss Kitty. Well, we didn't think we'd ever see you again. Where have you been? We've been working. You're all crippled up. We're breaking horses for Mr. Seibert. Seibert? You know him, Marshal? Yeah. Say, so did he come to the livery stable that night and hire you boys? Yes, sir. I should have figured that. Now, what kind of a bad deal did he give you? Oh, he gave us a real good deal, Marshal Dillon. We break ten head firm, and he's going to give me and my brother each a horse. We can take our pick. How near finished are you? Only got three more to go. And how long has your leg been like that? Five days. You have Doc take a look at that, young man. Well, I got to send a telegram for Mr. Seibert and pick up some things at the store. Then maybe I will. Bus, I'm not going to stop you from going back to your job, but Oren Seibert's no good. He'll try to weasel out of your deal some way. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, we better get... Oh, my. Hello, Chester. What is it, Chester? We got to find Doc. Right away, a fellow just rode in and told me. Told you what? Well, well, he was passing Cybert's place, and and there's somebody hurt real bad out there. Who? Oh, bus. It's your brother. <laughs> Easy, easy now. Real easy. How bad is he, Doc? Oh, get out of the way, Cyber. Jack, get up there. Now, Bus, Bus, you pack those robes in around him. Good and tight, will you? Sure, Doc. That crazy kid. He said he was anxious to ride, but I never figured he'd take on that big stallion. Crazy fool. You've kid. done enough talking, Cyber. Now shut up. Uh, Matt, we're ready. Yeah. Jeez. Your spine, Matt. You understand? Yeah, Doc, I'll drive slow. Bus. I'm here, Howie. It's getting cold since the sun went down. Yeah, it is. I ain't no coward. Am I, Bus? Coward? Of course you ain't. Who says so? Mr. Cyber said... Bus. I ain't no coward. Doc, come back here. Keep driving, Matt. Here, let me, let me. Oh, dear. Matt, there's no need to hold him in now. Give him their head. Get the lamp. There we are. Yeah. 
Lay him here on the couch, man. Yeah. That's it. Boss. Come away, boss. It won't do any good. No. Matt, there's some coffee in the kitchen. Ah, good. I can use some. Reach that cup there, man. Yeah. The coffee's been sitting all day. It's pretty strong. Thanks. You know, he stared at his brother's body all the way back to town, and he's in there staring at it now. I know. You know something else? Yes. He hasn't cried. Not one tear. I wish he'd cry and let some of that grief out. That's not natural, Doc. Come on, let's get it. Bus? Uh, he's gone, Doc. Come on. That boy's in no condition to be by himself. Well, he couldn't have gotten very far, Doc. Uh, I don't see him. No, I didn't. Do... Uh, what was that? Sounded like it came from back of the livery stable. That's him, Doc. It's got to be. Heading back to Cybert, you mean. Marshal, is that you? Moss? Marshal, somebody just broke into the stable. Made over the horse. Yeah, we heard it. That gun I kept behind the office door, it's gone, too. Come on, Doc. You know who it was? Yeah, Moss, I know. I'll get him. There's no light showing in the house. That could be a good sign, Doc. Come on. See him? No. What? It's the stallion. Yeah. Something in that corral's got him spooked. Hold it, Doc. Yeah, there he is, just inside the fence, sir. It's Cybert. He looks dead, but uh, I'll see what I can do. All right. Kid's probably holed up in the barn. I'm going to see if I can find it. But you watch that stallion now. I will. Boss. It's Matt Dillon. Stay out of this barn, Marshal. You young fool. He killed my brother. You should have left him to me. You never could have proved it on him. I don't come no closer. You did what you had to. I'm going to do what I have to. I'm going to take you, Buss. No. Now put the gun down. Stay back. Put it down. Don't make me kill you. I said put it down. What'll happen to me now? I don't know, Buss. It don't matter, none anyway. Matt. Yeah, I'm here, Doc. Cybert. It's dead, Matt. Oh, that's too bad. No, it's a good thing. I was thinking of the boy. So was I. He can ride, but he can't shoot. What? There's no bullet hole in Cybert. I figured the shots did nothing more than scare him. But they scared him so bad, he turned his back on that stallion. That's what killed him. Did you hear that, Bus? Yes, sir, I heard. Marshal. Kill. Now, don't be ashamed. Just let it out, son. <laughs> Come on, 
Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.